Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm here to do a Bible study on the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, because one of our brothers in Christ, who goes by Max, the bounty hunter, has said the Lord has laid three different chapters on his heart over the last couple days. He keeps hearing Jeremiah 51, and I wrote him down, the other two. I, this is just going to be on Jeremiah 51, what I feel the Lord has shown me. And uh, it might even be two videos because I don't want it to be too long. This is a very long chapter. And those of you who are not familiar with Jeremiah 51, or you want to see if you've missed anything, you can feel free to listen. Okay. So, I'm going to use the Holman Christian Standard Bible because it makes more sense. So, let me put me right in the middle. Now, I'll pull this forward. I'll try to keep the computer there where I won't have my head all up underneath like that. Okay. Jeremiah 51, verse 1. It's titled, God's Judgment on Babylon. Now, I and some other people have received words from the Lord that Babylon is America. And if you read chapter 50 and the descriptions in it, which I didn't do 50 because I already knew 50 and 51 were about destruction of America. I've been concentrating on 51 and here are some things that I picked up on it. All right, so I'm going to try to not be too long on any one section. Starting with verse 1, this is what the Lord says, I am about to stir up, oh, let me, let me say this real quick, everything that happened in the Old Testament has already happened, but it will happen again, like, for instance, the Exodus, um, the God's people were brought out of Exodus, brought out of Egypt during the Exodus. All those plagues are going to happen again. The three days of darkness are fixing to happen again. Uh, the sign of Jonah, three days and three nights in the belly of a whale, that happened with Jesus. Those are all references to the three days and three nights of darkness. Okay, this too. Jeremiah prophesied Babylon is going to be destroyed and be no more. That happened, but it's a double prophecy. Some things are triple prophecy. Okay, so it referred to Babylon, which was in Iraq, the area we now call Iraq. Okay, and it, this will happen here, unfortunately. And this is, and you'll see why. It says why in this chapter. This is what the Lord says. I am about to stir up a destructive wind, which means a spirit of a destroyer against Babylon and against the population of Leb Quamai. The footnotes means literally heart of my adversaries. And also, this means the Chaldeans. So we're being equated to the Chaldeans of that time. Verse 2, I will send strangers to Babylon who will scatter her and strip her land bare. For they will come against her from every side in the day of disaster. Okay. Don't let the archer string his bow. Don't let him put on his armor. And don't spare her young men. Completely destroy her entire army. The King James Version says the host, which is uh, troops, the army, will be, com will be completely destroyed. All right, verse 4. Those who were slain 
will fall in the land of the Chaldeans, those who were pierced through in her streets. Verse 5, for Israel and Judah are not left widowed by their God, the Lord of hosts, though their land is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Now, I was like talking to the Lord, you know, well, what do you mean by this? Israel and Judah are not left widowed. Okay, these are lands. When you think of a woman who's widowed, what's it mean? Her man is dead, right? A woman loses her husband. She's a widow. This says Israel and Judah are not left widowed by their God, the Lord of hosts, though their land is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. They're guilty of not living right. However, he isn't going to leave them widowed. Now, keep that in mind. Verse 6. Leave Babylon. Save your lives, each of you. Don't perish because of her guilt. For this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will pay her what she deserves. Verse 7. Babylon was a gold cup in the Lord's hand, making the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine. Therefore, the nations go mad. So it sounds to me like it's saying the sins of America have been taken to other nations and has caused them. To, let me let me click on tools because it'll take us into some strong concordance meanings. Okay, Babylon was a gold cup in the Lord's hand, making the whole earth drunk. I'm going to click on that. Shakar. Filled with drink, abundantly were merry or intoxicated to make oneself drunk. Okay, so it's got to be, oh, influenced. Okay, there we go. Figuratively, Influenced. Okay, that's our word. We have influenced other countries to do wrong. I thought it was the other way around. And made the nations go mad. I'm going to look up the word mad, which is halal. 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 Okay, of all the words it could mean, it's praise, glory, boast, mad, shine, foolish. Now that's like the opposite. Fools, commended, or rage. Celebrate, give, marriage, or renowned. Of all of these, it just seems like it ought to be foolish. Um, to make a fool of, in, make into a fool, to act madly, act like a madman. Um, it's the only one of these words that makes sense. So, if you want to go to where was I? That's verse 7. Makes the nations go mad. I think it makes them foolish. Okay, anyway. 51.8 Suddenly Babylon fell and was shattered. Wail for her. Get balm for her wound. Perhaps she can be healed. 
verse 9. We tried to heal Babylon, but she could not be healed. Abandon her. Let each of us go to his own land, for her judgment extends to the sky and reaches as far as the clouds. Verse 10. The Lord has brought about our vindication. Whose vindication? Come, let's tell in Zion what the Lord our God has accomplished. Okay? Remember that. Come, let's tell in Zion what the Lord our God has accomplished. Who's been vindicated? Okay. 5111. That's 5111. Sharpen the arrows. Feel the quivers. The Lord has put into the mind of the kings of the Medes that I looked that up. That's the Middle East. And East, uh, Middle East Asia and Asia, in that area. So I'm thinking Iraq, Iran, North Korea, probably China, that area. The Lord has put it into the mind of the kings of the Medes, because his plan is aimed at Babylon to destroy her, for it is the Lord's vengeance vengeance for his temple now what is the temple of God okay now I'm going to pull up my notes sharpen the arrows fill the quivers um, for his Lord's vengeance vengeance for his temple okay now here's what I believe this means the Lord has put it into the minds of the rulers of the Middle East, China, North Korea, etc., maybe Russia, to destroy America because it will be vengeance for what this country has done to Christianity. True Christians are his temple. And under that, I found this scripture. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Lord? That's 1 Corinthians 6.19. What's been going on in this country since the 50s? Well, really earlier. Look at the roaring 20s. I mean, then in the 50s, uh, 60s maybe, they took prayer out of school. And then came abortion and on and on until now we know all about pedophilia, Pizzagate. I mean, it's disgusting. I don't need to go into all that. And this country is trying to kick God out of everything, out of the government. It's just awful. So, okay, the Lord is angry and this is vengeance for his temple. All right. Jeremiah 51 verse 12 raise up a signal flag against the walls of Babylon fortify the watch post set the watchmen in place prepare the ambush for the Lord has both planned and accomplished what he has threatened against those who live in Babylon now Keep in mind, this is not against those of us who have been living right. You know, let's see, I don't have a note on that. But it's that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you can go back and read this in a King James Version if you want. But you'll be pulling up the Strong's Concordance a lot if you're not I just really struggle with the King James Version now. It's just so not English to me. I'm sorry. It's just my. It's just me. All right, verse 13. You who reside by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. Your life thread is cut. Now, here's how we know it's America 
and not just referring to old Iraq. Okay, we know it's a double prophecy because Iraq is not near many waters. Okay, Babylon might have been rich in treasures, but the land itself was not like America is today. Okay, well, and there's other references in other places that prove that. Anyway, it's you who reside by many waters, rich in treasures. Your end has come. Your life thread is cut. Verse 14. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself, I will fill you up with men as with locusts, and they will sing the victory song over you. He made the earth by his power, established the world by his wisdom, and spread out the heavens by his understanding. Okay. Verse 16. When he thunders, which the footnote says, literally, at his giving of the voice, when the Lord speaks, in other words, the waters in the heavens are in turmoil, and he causes the clouds to rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings the wind from his storehouses. Verse 17. Let's see. I thought I had it note on verse 17 no it's 19 is okay verse 17 says everyone is stupid and ignorant every goldsmith is put to shame by his carved image for his cast images are a lie there is no breath in them now we know that back in the uh, Old Testament days, Iraq was probably full of false idols, right? Statues and that kind of thing. But what do we have here in America? Uh, carved images. If any of you live in New York or have visited New York or Washington, D.C. or other older cities, that have a lot of old architecture, especially those two mentioned, they have reliefs carved into them. When my daughter took a trip to New York City with the choir and the drama ministry she was in, that was right after um, the September after, or, or May after September 11th when the Twin Towers fell, and they did dramas on street corners in Manhattan and really cool time for them and the choir went and they sang and they toured around and she took all these pictures of Radio City Music Hall and how all these pagan relief images were carved into their buildings all over the place. They're very pagan and Washington DC is the same way. Okay, so and those things were you know like really old, really old. Okay, now, so we have our carved images, not to mention the golden calf in front of uh, the stock exchange. Okay, so the cast images are a lie. There is no breath in them. And where else are there statues? Well, all over the place. Verse 18, they are worthless, a work to be mocked, at the time of their punishment, they will be destroyed. Verse 19. Jacob's portion, which means the Lord, is not like these because he is the one who formed all things. I'd never heard of the Lord referred to as Jacob's portion before. Um, but anyway, it goes on to say he is the one who formed all things. Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. Yahweh of hosts is his name. Now, in my notes, I've got 
it sounds like it is saying that Israel will be his battle club, his weapons of war. Okay, clearly I got that. Oh, I put verse 19 and I need to read verse 20. Okay, you are my battle club, my weapons of war. With you I smash nations. With you I bring kingdoms to ruin. Okay, so Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. Yahweh of hosts is his name. You are my battle club, my weapons of war, and with you I smash nations. With you I bring kingdoms to ruin. Verse 21, with you I will smash the horse and its rider. With you I will smash the chariot and its rider. See, no matter what version you go to, this, this is a, you really have to get into it. And, you know, I, I could probably spend a week on this. Let's see, I'm going to see how many minutes we're into this already. 21 minutes, and I've only gotten to verse 22. It's 21, 22. So, I'm going to end it here and pick it up with verse 23 in the next video, okay? All right, so I plead the blood of Jesus over this part of this video and over the internet connection and over each and every one of you as well and I pray that this is going to help you I mean I know it's sad and we don't want to hear it a lot of people won't want it but it's it's Bible I'm reading out of the Bible not some word I got from God okay we all got this word from God because we know that all scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit and is profitable for instruction, correction, or conviction, and training in righteousness. And I'll have to look that scripture up. I don't remember it. That's God breathed. Yeah. It's God breathed. All scripture is truth. So, with that I'll say bye for now and I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.